Chuck and Bob excited about Hoosier hysteria as we get you ready for the weekend. What a sectional semifinal night it will be. For my money, Bob, that's the best night of the sectional. Now, it's going to be a little different this year when you got shuttle fans in and out, but in a typical year when you've got four schools there all thinking they've got a chance to win, gyms are rocking on sectional semifinal. Night. And one of the most amazing things, and we've talked about this all year, is the fact that we got the season in. And yeah. uh, so blessed for all the efforts of coaches, administrators, athletic Everybody did a great job of helping the kids get to this point. And there'll be some bigger crowds, a little bit bigger crowds at the tournament, and it'll be a lot of fun. Well, let's hopscotch around. We'll start you off in 2A. LaVille picked up a very nice win last night over Hebron to stay alive in the tournament. Michael Edison's team has put together a nice season, 14-8, and eight, tied for the Hoosier North Athletic Conference Championship. And he's really got some reliable seniors on his team. And he's got some good players. Well, he's got Bobby Good, who's been uh, solid his whole career. Uh, he's got a, a young man, Leighton Zarnecki, who can rebound and score. Andrew Dill's been doing a good job. This is a nice unit, and they went through, uh, again, some issues with uh, some rescheduled games, but they uh, had a great season. Now, they'll take on a North Judson team that stayed alive with a 60-58 to win over Westville last night. Kent Chesham in his first year, but he's a veteran coach. He'll have his team ready for this one, even though it's a very young squad for the Blue Jets. Yeah, they come in with a record of 7-13, and 13, and so you'd say, uh, you know, but the schedule's been pretty good, and uh, the Blue Jays have a great uh, history, a great tradition there. And he's got some uh, really uh, top players, too. Trey Hampton's done a good job for them this year. And uh, also uh, Peyton Cox and uh, Blaine Wilcox has done a nice job. So this is a team that's been coming along. He's been very patient. Everybody makes the tournament, so you can be that way. You can teach and coach, and they should give LaVille a good battle. Kirk Manns isn't coming through that door, though. <laughs> David Haw isn't coming through that door. they got to find a way to beat LaVille, which beat them by 11 during the regular season. Let's go to 3A now, the West Nobles sectional. Second semifinal there has a battle of Northern Lakes Conference rivals. We saw Northwood last week, Bob. They're starting to get hot. Well, they are, and they've got a nice unit. And uh, again, as the coach goes through the course of the season, wants to find out who he can count on. There's a nice pass from Ben Vincent inside, and uh, they've got some uh, good shooters. They've got some good passes, very unselfish group. And uh, when you look at Cade Brenner and what he's done, uh, they've won their last four games. Ian Rash is doing a good job. Vincent, uh, Weens, Jackson, and a couple of guys off the bench who are helping him, Yoder and Von Prager. Shocking that they would have people with those names at Northwood, but. They are the defending sectional champions. Can they defend their title against their conference rival, the Wawasee Warriors? Speaking of teams warming up at the end of the year, John Everingham's team now above 500 after they beat Tipka New Valley on Tuesday night. And one player you won't see in these highlights because he wasn't healthy when we saw him earlier in the year is Keaton Dukes, the senior having a great season. And he's back healthy now and uh, playing really well. And uh, they had other guys that had to step up. Ethan Carey did. Uh, uh, Mason uh, Pozell uh, had, had some good games, Colin Roberson. They had people that were forced to step up because uh, uh, Keaton Dukes wasn't available for a while, but uh, this is a, a good unit in Coach Everingham. A lot, lot to be excited about in the future with this team. Northwood won the regular season matchup. That was 62-47 to the final, but that was way back on January 8th. That seemed like eons ago. Let's stay in Class 3A. Let's go to the South Bend sectional. And we've got John Glenn looking for its first 20-win season since 2005, taking on Washington in the first semifinal there. Travis Hanna's team is also a team that's got some momentum rolling into the tournament. They certainly do, and they've got reason to be excited about this one, certainly with the play of Bryson Hanna, along with Carter Young, Jack Porter, and uh, Silas Kayser. Uh, just an outstanding uh, point guard. They're 19-4. and four. And uh, this is just a tremendous run for the John Glenn Falcons and uh, coming in having won six in a row. The savvy of Kayser, a point guard, I think might be a key in this matchup with Washington because he's going to have to handle the ball against the Panthers pressure. You know, Ryan Varga, the fastest coach in Washington history to 50 wins, faster than Chad Johnston or Milt Cooper or Subby Nowicki. And he's got a healthy Jason Jones now, which really helps. Marcus Northern had a nice game the other night against Jimtown, too. Yeah, he did it all. He had 18 points, he had 11 rebounds, he had steals, he had black shots. Really did it all for them, and he, he is capable of being that kind of a player, and they really need him to. It's great to have Johnson back. Again, it gives them that uh, uh, double barrel action that you can throw at him, and they've uh, just done a good job. Now, they have uh, won their last three games. 
and uh, they've beaten uh, Kokomo, Laporte, and Jimtown. So not a bad run uh, into this point of the tournament for Washington. Seven wins, but Washington a dangerous team. Glenn cannot overlook them and look ahead to a championship game. By the way, we'll talk about that other semifinal at South Bend in a moment, but let's make a 4A into 4A. Michigan City, the site, and the second game there is a battle of conference champions. Adams and Mishawaka, and the Adams Eagles having one of the greatest seasons they've ever had, 22-1. But you know what this senior class so accomplished has not done yet, or at least they were only on the team as freshmen before, and that's win a section. And uh, we had a discussion before our uh, session here today, Chuck. You said that if you're going to be a team that leaves a legacy, you got to have those titles. And they've got great players in Saxon, Worsham, King, Columbus, Jeffries. Got a couple of people off the bench who can help. But this is a team that's really been focused all year. They've shown up for every challenge, and I think they'll be uh, a really tough team to beat uh, for Mishawaka. Adams has the chance for a rare individual achievement, too. Quintez Columbus right there on the verge of 1,000 points. He would join Braden Saxton and Sidney Jeffries as 1,000-point scorers. I can't think of too many teams that had three 1,000-point scorers in the lineup at the same time. But it is not a given that they beat the Mishawaka Cavemen. They only won by 10 in the regular season over at the Cave. Ron Hekalinski, another sterling job coaching this team. They're 15 and 7. They have their own 1,000 point score in Trent Johnson, and I imagine that's where the focus of the defense has to go. Well, it has to be there. Trent Johnson just done a great job, uh, one of the top players in Northern Indiana, and uh, had a chance to see him play a couple times this year. But uh, they've gotten some uh, uh, extra help off of uh, some young guys who have stepped up, and, and Coach Hekalinski's done a nice job developing uh, Maddox Yohe. Uh, Williams, uh, also uh, Sicario Thomas has done yep. a nice job. And my favorite guy, Tom Herringer, is just a freshman. He's 6'5", and he does some good things inside. This is a team that's going to be challenged by the quickness and the length of Adams. Uh, it'll every be, team is. Yeah, every team has been. And so it'll be a, a good matchup for Adams to continue to stay focused and, and to show up and get the job done. By the way, the Cavemen got their first sectional win in 10 years last night. But you know the last time they actually won the whole sectional? 1986, that's the longest drought for any school around here. So we'll see if they can pull the upset on Friday night. Another great 4A game at Northside Gym. You know, Warsaw and Elkhart played a one-point game back in January. I don't know if the sequel can be as tight, but I'll tell you this about Warsaw. Hot ponies coming into this one. The Tigers have ripped off eight in a row. They have, and they've, uh, again, uh, found them. You know, both these teams have something uh, similar, Chuck, in that they've had addition by subtraction. There are some guys that aren't on the roster now who were earlier in the season, and it's made them into better team units. And uh, uh, we had a coming out party for Jackson Gould on our broadcast of the Wallace C game. He hit some threes and built a lot of confidence. Uh, Judas and Fuque has been solid, Bishop Walters. They could use a little help on the boards, but this is a team that's really rallied around their new head coach, Matt Moore. You know, when the offense was struggling for Warsaw back in December, Matt Moore assured us it will come. It has. They've averaged 68 points a game in the last five games, and their shooting numbers through the course of the season have steadily gone up. But they have to handle a very athletic Elkhart team. Yes, tremendously inconsistent. It's amazing Kyle Sears still has hair. But <laughs> the fact of the matter is, this team can get up and down the floor, and on any given night, they have shown they can play with any. And they played a tough schedule at 12 and 11 as they hit in the tournament, and uh, Kyle Sears has really been patient. They won three of their last four games. Uh, Anderson, Daniels, uh, Emmons, uh, No Centelli now has stepped up. Uh, what are they going to get out of Darjean Lewis? We're not sure, but uh, Donovan Johnson has also been outstanding for uh, Elkhart. And uh, this is a team, again, you bring two schools together. And this is the first year of the combination of Memorial and uh, Central. And they've done uh, a pretty good job of getting ready to meld together. Out of all those guys you mentioned, I know Donovan Johnson's the leading scorer. Damarian Anderson had that double-double on Tuesday night against Concord. If they can get him to catch fire inside, he can be a game changer. But we don't want to change the game we got on the docket on Friday night because it, it is the game. You talk about sequels. Get these two Catholic rivals together. Number six, St. Joe. Number three, Marion. Lots of storylines. Maybe the last game for Mark Johnson. He's already announced his retirement. His best friend is Rob Berger, who wouldn't mind driving the van for him over to the retirement <laughs> community. <laughs> but we had this game about three weeks ago. 66-60, Marion won. 
To me, J.R. Konesny is one of the big stories in this game. He's 15 points away from 1,900 in his career. That would be the fourth St. Joe County player to get to 1,900. But he's never beaten Marion. He's never beaten Marion, and we know that if they beat Marion, if they can go a couple more games into the tournament, he's going to be near the all-time record mm -hmm. he's scoring in Northern Indiana. So uh, it's a lot of, uh, lot of sideline uh, news for St. Joe and uh, getting J.R. to that point, getting Mark Johnson to continue his career. And they've had uh, a good effort uh, from some other people, too. Uh, you can't say enough about uh, uh, the guys off the bench who've done a good job. Uh, Will Terry, uh, the, uh, Quinn and Fuda, the two jacks on the team, Litka, Hatkovich in the backcourt. This is a team that has enough talent, enough ability to win this game, but it'll be a tough test against tonight. Those guys all have to step up, though, because JR has averaged 41 in the last two games against Marion. It hasn't helped. One reason is the Knights really make them work for those points. The second thing is, as you take one more look about this, Declan Sullivan has really developed as a guard. I love the fact that he is able to not only penetrate, but read the floor and kick it out to the outside shooters. Marion's shooting has improved as the season has gone along, and Mitchell Menting is a weapon. Rich Brooks is their leading scorer. And uh, Menting in the game against Clay was three out of five from three-point range, and it's pretty tough to stop when he's 6'4". Uh, Richard Brooks has been outstanding. Uh, Tyrell Franklin, we think is the key defensively as uh, he did against St. Joe the first time around. And you can't say enough about Deglin Sullivan and what he's done, but uh, K uh, Kaleo Kekalea did not start the last game for Marion. A little under the weather, should be ready to go. So it should be a lot of fun. If you want to watch it live, it's behind the paywall on the IHSA site. You got to pay 10 bucks, but it might well be worth it. If you're a little more frugal, you can watch it live, or not live, but on tape on TV 46. Friday night at 11 and Saturday morning at 9. We look forward to that one. We look forward to the whole night of Hoosier Hysteria. Hope you're looking forward to it too. For Bob Nagel, Chuck Freebie, thanks for joining us on social media.